Hi, I'm Sharani M. Batak, and I'm a relationship therapist, author, speaker, consultant, and healer. I work with impact-driven women of color to help them grow their impact and influence by healing through the pain and trauma of perfectionism, imposter syndrome, judgment criticism, and the not enoughs, which we have come to believe as a result of living under systems of supremacy, culture, and oppression. And today I wanna to share with you five things that you can do to become more resilient during turbulent times. The most important factor to remember is that when I'm speaking about resiliency, I'm speaking about the resiliency of your nervous system. How well can your nervous system move from one end of the spectrum of fight or flight to the other end of the spectrum of freeze and come back into the middle where homeostasis resides? That's what you're gonna hear me speak about today. So the first thing to do in growing that resilience in the ability to move so that you don't get stuck over here in a stress response is for you to slow down. <laughs> that is the first and most important thing for you to do if you are to grow your resiliency at any time and especially during turbulent times. And I'll share an example at the end about how all of this comes together. The second thing to do as you are allowing yourself to slow down is when you start to notice that you're moving out of center right here where health resides, then pause. Just notice, just pause and let yourself just oop, interrupt that pattern. The third step is to breathe. And what breathing does is it allows your prefrontal cortex and your neocortex, so where all of your higher reasoning and your social emotional engagement resides, it allows that part of your brain to stay online so that it doesn't trigger that fight or flight or freeze response in your nervous system. So that is the third step. The fourth step is to notice what is happening inside of you, what's happening in your body, what's happening in your thoughts. And the fifth step is to regulate. And that means once you've slowed down enough to know that something is about to pull you out of your center, the next step is to pause and interrupt that pattern from your survival reptilian brain hijacking you. And then you just breathe to keep that higher reasoning brain, that mammalian brain engaged. You notice what is happening in my body and is what I'm feeling an actual threat? Is there something really that's threatening here that I need to respond to and go out of the center of health for? Or is it something else? And then the fifth step is to regulate. Regulate yourself with a few more deep breaths and just <sighs> <laughs> bringing yourself back, keeping yourself here so that you're not running out to either end and getting stuck. Now, the thing that happens with resiliency is we need to not get stuck on either end of the spectrum. Resilience is about the ability to come back towards center where health resides. And so the example I promised you is Let's say you've just come home from a long day of work, a long commute. It was just exhausting as it always is. And you walk in the kitchen, getting ready to make dinner, and you see that your teenage kids have left the dishes in the sink and the kitchen is a mess when they came home and had their after school snack. In that instance, you could very easily go into the and getting sucked in and getting pulled in and wanting to yell at them. And when you are implementing the five steps I shared with you, what ends up happening is if you've slowed down enough that you know this is a trigger and can activate you into a stress response, then you know, okay, 
I just walked into the kitchen and I see what's here. <sighs> Let me pause, interrupt that pattern from going to the old default. Let me breathe as you just heard me do, keeping my social engagement and higher reasoning brain online. And then, <sighs> Let me notice how I'm starting to feel really angry and resentful, feeling like my kids don't care about me because I've told them over and over again how much it stresses me out that I come home and there's dishes all over the sink. And instead, I can regulate that part of me. And as I do so, I now have the decision to make an empowered choice. Am I going to react? out of the same old way of doing things and yell at them, which further alienates me from them? Or am I going to allow myself to move through these five steps and then open myself up to honesty, openness, intimacy, uh, vulnerability, and to have an opportunity to connect with them, letting them know that to me, it's as though they don't care when they don't follow through on their part with helping around the house. And when you can do that, you're actually even further superpowering and supercharging your resiliency and you're modeling that as well as healthy communication and vulnerability and emotional intimacy with your children. So the choice is yours with these five steps that are so easy and simple to do that it can happen in a matter of seconds. You get to decide. I hope that you choose the path of greatest resiliency.